Hello everyone, this is Tyva Littles again, and I just first and foremost want to thank you guys for subscribing to my channel as well as liking and commenting on my videos. Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to go over some new features that Desire Space upgraded with and kind of practice a bit and show you guys new techniques to do the same exact thing. One of my most popular videos is the shadowing video. So I want to show you how you can access those same techniques using the new Cricut Design Space as well as new techniques. So here we go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead, select text. Text is still in the first column, A column. This font that I'm using is called the Advocate. It's one of my favorite fonts now. It's very thick and bold. You see where the letter spacing is. The letter spacing is still in the top bar on the second row. So that hasn't changed much. I'm decreasing my spacing so that my curlies can touch. And you know, once you do that, you want to make sure that you weld it. Okay, so now we have that. I'm going to duplicate it. And remember, we used to change our colors from over here. Our colors are over here now. So I'm going to change this color, and it's saved as a cut image. This I'm going to leave black. I'm going to save it as a print image. Okay. So save it as a print image. This is going to be the first one we're going to work with. Let me duplicate this and hide it. Okay. That's the first one we're going to be working with. And I'm going to hide this. Okay. So now I have my print image. Okay. We're going to go to make it. We're going to focus on this mat. Continue. Send to printer. Make sure your bleed option is on. I'm going to hold down my control and the right mouse key. I'm not working for my MacBook. Make sure that you're using Google Chrome with your Cricut Design Space so that you can access some of these. All of these items pull up. I'm going to save image as. We're going to go with YouTube. Nicole. Shadow. Okay. And it's saved as my, on my desktop so I can find it as a PNG image. Save. So now I'm going to cancel out of all of this. Make sure I delete. Okay. Go to upload. Find my file. Okay. We're going to go to simple. You can make it bigger. Select your one, your select erase one. Click on it. Save it as. We're going to save it as your save and cut image. This right here. We can always change it to a print if we need it, but we need to save it as a cut image. Go so here. Okay. Upload. There's our shadow. So this is um, how we did our original video. You click here and then you go to arrange, send to the front. So that's how you arrange that to the front. So for my first video, this is how we did our shadow. There we have it. Okay, so that is how we did our shadow from my first video. Now, there's another technique that I learned along the way called offset, okay? And I want to share this with you guys. So I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to change this color to black. Okay, so with offsetting, you just want the shadow offset. You don't want the letter sitting on the inside. So you can only slice two images at a time. So we're going to select these two images. And you see the slice pops up. Now here's where it gets a little funky. Okay, now I have all of this jibber jabber. The best way for me to see what I want to keep and delete, you see that is what I want to keep. This is what I want to delete. So I'm going to click on that, delete, and get rid of this. Now also I want to keep my black together. So you hold on your shift button and click all of your black parts and weld those together. There we go. 
So with the blue, let's see what's this. Let me hide this. There we go. Okay, that's probably the other one. Okay, so here's my offset, my blue, which I should change to another color. Let's change it to red. Okay, so this is my offset right here. And this is my whole wording. How cool is that? So when you go to make it, you want to have two mats. You have your solid mat of your word, and then you have your offset right here. So I'm going to even take it a step further on how you can help yourself align these items. So we're going to hide this. Okay, and go to your shapes and select the star. I'm going to show you how to add registration marks to your work so that you can make sure that they layer perfectly. Okay, so I have two I'm going to duplicate it because we need two stars. Okay, pull that to the side for a second. And I'm going to place the star within here without touching any part of it. So I think this will be a good part here to put the star. Okay, so now that I have a good spot for the star, I'm going to select all and attach. Okay, now I'm going to place this star on top of this star, or under it rather. Okay, so now we're going to hide this. Go back. Let's weld it instead of attach. Okay. We're going to weld it together. There we go. Make it all one. Okay. So after that, I'm going to select all and weld. So now I have my registration marks. And what a registration mark is, is as you lay your project down, you're going to lay those two vinyl stars on top of each other so you can make sure that this is aligned just like it is on the screen. So let's go back to make it. Okay, you have your registration mark here, and you have your registration mark here. Now, if you're aligning vinyl projects, you can use the registration mark, but you do not want to press that registration mark onto your project because you won't be able to get it off. But one of the best tips that you should know about layering vinyl is that you want to layer it at the lowest temp possible so that it would adhere to your shirt because the more heat you put to your vinyl, the more that it will shrink and will have your lines unaligned. And the more that you do it and practice with it, the more that you will understand that concept. So as I practice with it, actually aligning my HDV around about 270-ish, 275 was a great temperature for me to use in order to make sure my HDV did not shrink. Now on your final press, you press it at the recommended temperature once everything is on the shirt. But while you're pressing your layers, you want to press it at the lowest temperature as possible. 14 here. Okay, so that was two ways to shadow you guys. The original, the original way that we did it before, and then the offset. There we go. Okay, so I hope that this video tutorial was a little bit more informative. I actually want to show you one more way before we actually move forward, but this is how you do it in Quick Design Space. Okay, At, over the last year, I've been experimenting with different ways to make my work easier. So I came across this new software called SCAL, and it's SCAL 5, and it's short for Shortcuts A Lot 5. And I've learned that when I put in this, all I have to do is just select Control and the right click mouse button, and go to Appearance and add Shadow Layer. And I want to do maybe a, a little mintish. Okay, we're gonna do that. I just select my color, and my standard size for a shadow is 0.167, that thickness. Select OK, and boom, it's shadowed in one click of a button, per se. Okay, and also, I can actually do multiple shadows, so I'm going to hold down Control, right-click, Appearance, Add Shadow, and I want to add a layer count of two. Variance, I usually do about 1.7 and go ahead and change this to 0.167 and I'm going to do the blue again 
my regular shadow and then for my outside shadow I want to do maybe a darker blue or even a green okay so now I can decrease the variance I actually like to increase but then I can increase this one can I see it let's try a different color there we go okay it was kind of hard to see because the colors were so close together Okay, let's do this. There we go. Oh, yeah. That looks good. Oh, that's how it looks. <laughs> okay, we're going to undo it and try it again. Appearance, add shadow. 0.167. And my blue outline. Okay, layer count. 1.7. Black. There we have it. Okay, so that is how you do the multi layer. And this is how you do the single layer shadowing. And you see, all it takes is just a click of a button. And what's even more awesome about this is that I could actually save it as an SVG. So when I save it, I just go to Edit, Select All, and go to File. Export. We're going to do YouTube. Nicole. I'm saving it on my desktop as an SVG. You could also save it as all of these other formats as well. Okay, so I want to save it as an SVG. Save. Make sure that these two bottom boxes are selected and leave this box um, unselected. Go to OK. And that's it. I've saved it into an SVG. So the last part of this video, what I want to do, I'm just going to go ahead and move these to the side real quick. I'm going to upload this. Okay, there we go. Okay, and it pops up just that easily, you guys. So, as you can see with this method, it's much cleaner and crisper. You know, so if you guys are interested in that software, I'll put that software information in the description box. It's actually called Scal5. And this right here, what you would have to do is hold down the shift button. Make sure that all of this is selected because you want to weld that. So that is all one word. And then you do the same with this one. Make sure that all of these words, these letters are selected and select well so that it's all one word. So as you pull it together, pull it apart, you have your shadow and your wording. Those will be two separate mats. As you pull this apart, you will have this and then you have that, which you can also ungroup so that it's in three parts. Okay? So in the event that you want to slice it, to make it so it's not so bulky. Some people have a different preference. I'm going to delete these items here so that we can have a full mat. Just to show you quick, okay? So we have this, like so. You can only slice two images at a time. So we're going to select Slice. Okay, take this out, delete that. So we have this. Then we're going to go up to a range, bring to the front. There. So you can do it like that as well if you like. But I just want to show you guys the different ways that you can use the shadow. So I hope this video gave you guys some insight and some options to play with. And I look forward to teaching you guys new things. Happy creating and see you soon.